on, uh, I'm gonna put us up on Facebook. I'll tell you, I'll tell you how many suggestions we have, and then uh, you just pick a number. Okay. And then well, we go. Face going. What's that? I still had the face, like the beard was all pushed in from wearing a face mask all day. It, dude, beard looking good. Thank you. That's honestly, that's really what I was fishing for. And now that I've gotten it, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to say, uh, and now that I've gotten it, uh, see you later, dude. That's yeah, thanks. I yeah, listen, I, I got the compliment. Yeah, yeah. Who needs improv when you already got compliments, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, isn't that why we do improv for the compliments? Isn't that it? Everything for the look at me yes i matter i matter I'm, my my parents are wrong i'm somebody <laughs> everyone, mom and dad yeah. everyone, everyone everyone was wrong um oh uh, all the reasons you hated me when i was younger the reasons i i do i can do this <laughs> seriously all the things that you were told like to not do now come into play as improvisers it's so great it's very true I love it. Um, like, for this, the first time I ever got an acting gig, it was a pothead, and it's called. It's on a show called Burnos, and my role is pothead dude. And the, the the director comes up, he goes, "Do you have any training?" I was like, "Well, I have acting training, but I've been training for this my whole life. <laughs> I got this one, dude." <laughs> my day has come. I'm not going to give up my shot. I got this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been training from this since I was like 11. This is what we do. <laughs> Stoner dude, number two. Damn, did you see me? I was stoner dude three. Yeah, crushed it, crushed it. I was the guy that was like, yeah. <laughs> it's not what I said, but how I did it. You know what I mean? Get us the yeah guy. We need the yeah guy. Get him in here. It's not just a, you don't just throw the yeah out there. It's like it's an elongated, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you three takes and uh, you pick the okay. one you want. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Let's see. One through. Uh, pick a number one to twenty-four. Okay. I I'm always late to the party, so I'm just gonna pick twenty-four because that would be me if I was the last, um, the last guy. Well, this is perfect. It comes from Diana Brown, and up, it, Diana? It, she is amazing. She's up in the Bay Area, but her suggestion is. 47 miles from home. Okay, that's relevant. Yeah, so true. I like it. Well, I'm lost. Yeah. I, oof. We haven't seen a sign for a couple miles. Yeah. Yeah, I probably should have told you this earlier, but I'm nearsighted. So I haven't been seeing a sign for many, for all of the miles. Okay, all right, that makes sense. And I, when I get in the car, I fall right asleep. So I should have probably told you, hey, when I say you take the first shift, I'm gonna be completely out. And then when we, I'm, okay. Well, I'm gonna take the blame because I let you sleep and I knew that you didn't know. And I saw you there like a baby. You were adorable. Oh, and really? I, I, yeah, I mean, it, you were, you were enough to not wake you and think I could handle it being nearsighted, but I, I, we are very lost. I, I always have a fear that when I'm sleeping that I'm going to drool or, I, you know, uh, uh, like my head goes back or something, but wow, thank you. You, you, did, you did all that. You did all that. Okay, but it, okay. it was, it was Why would you think that would negate its adorability? I think because I have a critical self-judgment. Dude, you do that a lot, man. You're always so, you really, like before you walk into a room, it's like you tell yourself nothing's gonna go your way and then it just doesn't. But yeah. the truth is everything you do, it could go your way. The drooling was adorable. No reason for you to put the, a blanket over your face like that. And I saw you trying to hide. Yeah, I didn't feel like I was trying to physically take up as little space as possible. You don't need to. You should take up as much space as you, be you believe you need, man. Well, that's, see, all right, all right, Duncan, that's the problem is I don't think I, I deserve a lot of space. Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, at what point in your life did someone tell you you didn't deserve the space? I'll stay 47 miles from home in the desert, and we'll stay here and not, not leave until we figure out why you don't love yourself, man. 
Whew. Wow, I was just thinking about this yesterday. Uh, I mean, it started with my parents. They never wanted a they child. Do? They kept telling me I was an accident. I mean, it started right there. It starts and then just amplifies. So you believe them? I have you know, you know I, I was told by a rabbi, dude, that everyone's life is separate. So whether you have a good relationship with your parents or a bad relationship, it's separate. So you might be their accident. You're my blessing, dude. Are you, sh don't say this if you don't mean it, Duncan. I mean it from the bottom of my fucking heart, Jeremy. And everybody who knows you feels the same. You are loved, man. Oh, I don't deserve it. Yes, you do. 100% oh. do. I can't. I want, you to look at, I want you to look in the rear view right now. And I want you to say, Duncan, you deserve it. Uh, 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 you, you deserve it. Wait, you want me to tell you that I deserve it? I want you to tell yourself. I want you to look in the freaking okay. mirror, man, and I want you to tell yourself that you deserve it. All Duncan, right. I deserve it. Hold on. Hey. You... You deserve love. You just no. You deserve love. No, you yes. deserve it. You deserve yes. love. I deserve love. Yes. I say Lots it. I don't. I don't even believe it. I gotta believe it if I say it. I gotta. I believe gotta believe it, it. Duncan. You have to believe it. That Peter Pan. Peter Pan would have dropped to his fucking death out of that window if he didn't believe the happy thoughts. So you put yourself out of that window, Peter Pan. It, dude. Believe it, Duncan. You deserve love. I deserve love. I deserve love. I de I'm a worthy human being. I Scream deserve it. love. I'm a worthy human being. I am enough. Yes. I deserve love. Yes. I'm, I deserve more to be here. I'm not an accident. I'm, I'm not an accident. I'm, I'm on purpose. I, I'm here for a reason. Yeah. I'm not an You accident. have a purpose. I have a purpose. <sighs> I have a purpose. You have a purpose, Duncan. Oh my God. How does that feel? Uh, it feels a combination of uncomfortable and exhilarating. That's what change is, baby. What if I told you I wasn't nearsighted, Duncan? Uh, what? What if I tell you that I had yeah. so much foresight that I knew that it's, uh, it would take getting lost in a fucking desert with me for you to realize the love that you deserve? What if I told you that? Well, uh, up until about five minutes ago, I would have said you're crazy. But now what I'm going to say is like, I believe it. I believe you were put here and right now at this moment. And the, the moment is now for me to realize this. 100%. And I want you to realize that, that it was you who did it. I just showed you the way, man. But you took the step. It's been so hard. We're gonna go to your parents' house now. Or oh. sometimes soon. Oh. And you're, you're, can you do it? Uh, I'm not yeah, a fucking yeah. accident, mom. I deserve to be here. You deserve it. Every time, you know what? Every time I've talked to my parents, they've told me, they've reminded me that I was an accident every single time. Anytime I introduced them to anybody, they said you were an accident. Anytime that I've brought a friend over or a significant other, they've always said, you know, he was an accident. Like they just say it and it's be I've been so numb to it, but I'm not an accident. I am not They're an accident. They are either extremely mean, cold hearted people. Yes. Or they are hilarious people and, and don't care for feelings and just go for the joke. But either way, man, it's not right. It's not. And the only accident, all right, the only accident is, is, is them. They're the accident. What if I said that? What if the only reason they're here is so that way you would be here? Put that into your brain. Wiggle it around. So they're the catalyst for me being here. Well, they might not be worth shit, but if they didn't exist, you wouldn't. And you're worth gold, not feces. So... I would say that their reason for living at all is because of you. 
And of course, since they've done nothing great in their entire pathetic lives, they would assume the only good thing they ever did was an accident because they don't even know what good looks like. You know what I'm saying, Duncan? I, I do, but I have a question. Jeremy, why? Sure. Why? Why, why do you, why do you care so much? You could have just never said anything. You could have just let me be the way I was being. Because one day, whether you want to, whether you want to acknowledge it or, or whether you know or not, Duncan, I was just some dude on a bar stool. All right. I spent every day there, not because I, I, I wasn't worth anything. Yeah. You, I, I was a struggling mechanic and yeah. I couldn't even get a wrench. And what'd you say, Duncan? I said you, you got to well, I, yeah. said, I mean, I said several things. I don't want to. You said a lot of things regarding the wrench, Duncan, and, and it led me to picking up a book and learning about a wrench. And now look at me. I, I'm a successful mechanic. You don't think you're to blame for that? You don't think you're the catalyst of my mechanical genius? I, I, I always thought it was just an offhanded comment, but... I guess we say things and affect people in ways that we don't even know. We have no idea what it could do. Just speaking the truth, man. You're the Einstein to my rocket, just, Duncan. Yeah, just speaking the truth. Speaking the truth. We didn't get lost. I mean, we got found. I got found tonight. We did. I didn't get lost. I got found. That's right. You found, you helped me find myself. I found myself tonight. Right now at 12.03 a.m., I found myself. Today is my birthday. It's my birthday today. Today, right now, is my new birthday. It's my rebirth day. I was going to say, I, I, for a second, I felt really bad uh, that I didn't know it was your birthday. But now I get what you're saying. It's, a, yeah. it's a, the new, you're the, the, the phoenix from the flames. Yeah, yeah, it's rebirth. The new yeah. Double D. Oh, we can work on it. We can work on it. I, I mean, I, I think we're working on it already. I have one more thing to tell you, Duncan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how to get back home. Hey, you know what? Let's just drive. Let's just That's drive. The yeah. That's the Duncan I've been waiting to meet for a long time. We got nowhere to go. We're already here. Amen, brother. Hey, Amen. Turn, turn this song up. And I can't catch that feeling anymore. Yeah. It's perfect timing for a song like this. Scene. <laughs> Oh yeah, man! That, that was, was fun. So, that was so fun, dude. <laughs> that was awesome, man. I love that. <laughs> that was so great, man. Like it set okay. the mood and everything. It was so cool. Yeah. I'm actually sad now that Duncan doesn't exist. I feel like I had a friend for life, and now now he's just <laughs> Duncan's no more. You do have a friend for life, brother. You thank you, Jay. Have a friend, you got a friend. It's so it was so easy playing with you. Like I don't, we've never played together. No, no, we haven't. I've, I've, I've been actually, I was hoping we would get a chance. And I didn't even think it'd be that easy. I thought it'd be like three months from now on a date that's not determined. <laughs> no. no, I'm <laughs> like, see, I'm so awesome. yeah, the sooner the better. And like yeah. hopping on and just, just, you know, having the, the thought of uh, let's play and have as much fun as possible. That's it. I, I live for that, dude. Yeah. That's the worst, one of the worst parts really about this whole, you know, pandemic. I mean, not the worst part, like you were saying, the worst part for being privileged enough for to be the worst part is not, <laughs> you know, not being able to, to play and not being able to have fun with, you know. Well, I mean, it's so. such, a, I, was, I was talking to a friend of mine just a few, like maybe half hour ago, talking about the, the importance of play in adults. And we push that aside uh, we, we do it as kids and then it slowly gets beaten out of us, but we forget that it's so important, whether it's improv or you're in a, you know, dart league or you're playing, you know, yeah. volleyball or whatever it is, the, the importance of play, uh, we've overlooked that for so many other things. And, and I, I, that's why I love improv is like, you can just play. 100%. I mean, I've always, that's why I've always loved it is, well, I feel like that's what we do as adults is, is 
we like we tell ourselves okay all that imagination stuff doesn't isn't isn't what's important and then we we dive into an imagination world that was <laughs> that's not even fun like, and, no and the world that we have to live in and it's not even a fun world like the other shit was more real to me than taxes with and, forms i can't read like what the fuck i don't get life i get this <laughs> and, and we wear costumes in life they're just not the fun yeah. costumes yeah why well, i i'm you know Little kid, I asked my mom, I said, why don't they just make the roads level? She's like, I don't know. I was like, why? I was like, I don't know. It'd look cooler. Why? If you're going to do it, why do it all shitty and ugly? Yeah. And, yeah. That, you know? Well, I think, <laughs> I, I think it was George Carlin who some, you know, said it best. He goes, you know, the first year of your life, you people can't wait for you to walk and talk. And then the rest of your life, you're told to sit down and shut up. Shut up. Yep. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I love that. Um, how did you Truth. get into improv? What brought you, like, how did you find your way? You know what's funny? So I've, I've wanted to be an actor since I was a little kid. I've done all the theater stuff. I, I grew up in Florida and uh, I ended up doing this. Uh, it was a really amazing program called Love Well. Uh, and it's like, it started, I think, in like Kentucky or something by like a guy who's just an amazing theater guy. His name's uh, David Spangler. But anyway, he put on this thing where he'd take like 10, 15 kids that would get picked that year. He put us all in a room. And literally in three weeks, we'd have a full play. The like we'd break up in parts. We'd write a play. We'd write the music. We'd do all this. But all of the warm ups before we got to writing, I didn't know it at the time. Every single one of them was Second City. Wow. And so these tag, and I'm talking like I did this when I was 11, 12, 13, and it was my favorite thing to do. And then I would start doing. I got more in the acting, like like just you know more, you know theater work and stuff like that. And I'd be playing these really serious characters, and I was always like man, that fucking thing that I did that, that had, doesn't even have a name was so much fun. And then I was always obsessed with like SNL and stuff like that. So I knew I wanted to go to Second City and I still had no idea that I knew most of, I mean, I'm talking level one games. Yeah, 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 yeah. With, But still, I had no idea that I already knew some of the core sh shit. So wow. that was like a my, like, I, so I feel like it kind of came to me, uh, I guess. That makes sense. Wow, of course. And you're like, it's so great. You go, hey, can we get back to the warm ups? Because those are the most fun part of what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, listen, this character's cool. People are crying. That's nice. I feel dark. <laughs> well, what about that freeze tag when I was farting and everybody's pretending to smell it? That was fun. That I like. <laughs> wow. And so now um, uh, you've used that. And how long have you been like, um, uh, improvising you're in LA now right or or yeah, you, yeah. and I want to talk about where you are specifically in yeah, a yeah. <laughs> but but you're based out of LA yeah I live in LA I'm in like I'm like right off the 10 uh in uh like past Koreatown so I'm like I'm like central like almost south central but not like on the cusp yeah cool area it's all right <laughs> <laughs> and were you doing like a lot of improv pre-quarantine were you were you doing a bunch of that or yeah well so i was i was doing second city for years uh when i first came out here in 2013 and then i just had a lot of tragedies man like my dad died my grandpa died like half my family just passed one after another oh, sorry. and it, it just honestly messed me up i started showing up the club i got all the way to it's actually an embarrassing it's kind of a real sad thing in my life this particular not just the dying, but I basically, I would show up to the uh, grad review. I was at the last level and I'd show up smelling like pot. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I wasn't fucking doing any of the, yeah. you know, I wasn't like, I, like I'm doing now or like yeah, I was yeah, all yeah. the last before. And uh, I got, I got kicked out <laughs> and refunded. So. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Definitely, I can come back, but I think. Well, I mean, how, like, what, <laughs> Man, the fact you're able to share that and say like, yeah, I was at a, you know, you're at a place where there's, there's this, all this tragedy happening all around you and like, like. And also I don't think anyone else even knew that I kept it in and I just got, yeah. I just looked like some dude that was falling apart and they, you know, they didn't know why. So, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. you know, and I only really, I even brought that up just because that's one of the reasons why I'm here now. It's because I'm like returning a favor for a friend who helped out back then. So. Well, when you say you're. All connected. Where, when you say you're here now, where are you yeah. right now? And what are you, yeah. what are you doing? So I'm in the Mojave Desert <laughs> and it's really hot. And uh, though basically, so like one of my best friends in Florida, when my, when my dad passed, my grandpa was 97 and I already moved out here and I was going back and forth, but basically, you know, I was far away. So my friends were always helping out and then they got in a little trouble and uh, they're not, they're not able to come out here right now. 
uh, and their their grandpa's sick, and then his wife's in the hospital, and so they had no one. So I, uh, I mean, talking about it almost makes me feel like I'm trying to like sound like I'm a, I'm a good guy. Honestly, so I anyway, I came out here to help him out, and then one. Once I came out here, I found out about how his, I'll say hello because how his wife might have had a, had COVID. So right when I came in here, I was like, well, I don't even know if I mean, you know, good deeds, wow. fucking good deeds. Why am I here? But yeah, I mean, I'm going to stay. And also once I met him, he's like amazing. So I, I can't leave now because, you know. Uh, that's crazy, man. That's crazy that you're like, yeah. it's, you were talking about it. It's, it's, you know, somebody helped you out. So your instinct is, yeah, of course I'm going to help somebody else out. Like but, but it goes deeper. I mean, these are like my best friends since we yeah. were like little kids, you know what I mean? So it's like, I couldn't, I mean, even if they weren't able to help my grandpa, I'd, I'd have to come out here. Oh, wow. But, well, but once I got here, I met the guy and now I'm doing it for him. So now you're like, Oh man, now I like you. I gotta stay. <laughs> right. Well, I, I can't, yeah. When I came in, he literally gave me a speech. He's like, I'm so happy I can have someone around me that I trust. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, that's so beautiful. I'm so happy to be here. Fuck, I can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. All right, yeah. here we go. Yeah. In it for the long run. Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> well, man, I mean, think of all the people, the all the people, especially older people who in this situation are so scared. Um, they they don't have anybody around them. They don't know what's happening. They're very vulnerable, yeah. and they have just to have somebody else there is huge. So that's great. Honestly, man, I didn't even realize how bad. Like, I know there's a lot of people that ag, you know ad, ag, 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 advocate, advocate. Sure. That's the word. It's the hard one. A lot of people are advocates. Yeah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> for, uh, for like elderly abuse and stuff. Like I've been hearing it my whole life, but I, but me and my grandpa were so close. He was like the coolest dude. He like knew Meyer Lansky, and he was always doing. He was doing like Louis uh, Louis Nye uh, these stuff and everything. So like he was always great. So when he was sick, me, my brother, my sister, my brother was in Israel. He was flying out, taking care of him. I was flying from California to take care of him. My sister was, you know, coming from New York to take care of him. I mean, all on her own dime, just trying to make sure he was good. But nobody, the only reason I say that, not to make us look good, dude, nobody, not like not one other person in the home he was at had visitors ever. And they were like all shocked that we would come. But that's yeah. crazy, like how people just dump their, you know. You can't believe it. We just got right? deep. Why did we get deep, man? This was supposed to be funny. You we were supposed to get poet, poetic. Dude, you go where it goes, right? You just go where it goes. <laughs> Who cares? Fucking likes, not fair. Why? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I think it's it's a story of like, you know, hope and, and, and taking care of those people and like not letting people, if you see an opportunity, take advantage of it and say, okay, I can do this. Like I've, you right now you've got the ability to do this and you, you, you know, bottom line, you said, absolutely, I'm going. And like, we need people yeah. like that. We need people who go, we're part of this social contract and we don't have as many people like that right now, sadly. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, I do want to say for all the viewers, you know, I, I, again, they were my best friends. So if you have a sick person at home, I, I wish them the best. I can't help. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, where, Matt, where can people, if they want to like follow you or work with you or anything like yeah. that, what's, where, where can they find you online? Uh, I'm on Instagram, uh, Matt Sterling Nye or Matthew Sterling Nye. I always fuck that up. It's either Matt Sterling Nye or Matthew Sterling Nye. I think it's Matthew Sterling Nye. But I got like a good amount of followers and a bunch of stupid videos. Like you'll know right away that it's me, that I'm just like being like a stupid person. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> oh, myself? Did I do a good Jay? Did I do a good Jay? It was so great how you in this scene instructed me to believe in myself <laughs> and you in real life is exactly the person I was in the scene. Yeah, I have no, no confidence. Tell me I'm good. <laughs> Tell me I'm pretty. You're pretty, you're pretty, you're good. You're pretty good. I'll take it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was so fun playing with you, man. I can't wait to do yeah. it again. This was awesome. Please, I'm, I'm, anytime you want me, man, I'm available always. Um, great, man. Love Stay you. in touch, uh, brother. We will. Friends for life. I love and you, Duncan. <laughs> See you, bye. <laughs> <laughs>